Hey everyone, Harry here from Aero. Today I'm going to be running you through some camera settings so you can get the best shots out of your Aero Pro. Now camera settings can seem quite daunting at first, so in this video we'll be simplifying things and showing you two methods you can use with your Aero Pro. One's more beginner friendly and we'll be using the auto mode and then we'll show you an advanced version which uses the Pro settings. Now it's important to note that both of these methods will give you the same great results. So let's start with the simple version using auto mode. Essentially what we're going to do is lock our camera settings so we don't have any colour or light shifts during our filming. Now when we're in auto mode, this is essentially the drone telling us it thinks it has the perfect settings for exactly what it's looking at. Now auto mode is going to work well for most shots, but any changes to the colour or light in our shot are going to affect it quite quickly. Now this is where locking our settings comes into play and will help us out. Now an example of this, let's say we're filming the ocean and then we want to tilt our camera down towards the sand. Now when we do this, our camera is going to compensate from going from a dark subject to a bright subject and we're going to see this in the camera while it's happening. Now if we do this in reverse, we're going to have the same thing happen. So we're going to have the camera going from a bright yellow subject tilting up to a dark blue ocean. And while we're doing that, we're going to see the colours and the exposure change on screen. And this is due to the white balance and the exposure settings not being locked on our camera. Now the first thing we need to do is turn off our auto white balance and we can do that by pressing the EV settings at the bottom of the screen here. Now once we've done that, we can see the white balance and what it's currently set to just next to automatic. And to turn this off, all we need to do is hit automatic. Now if you're not sure what to set your white balance to, I recommend just copying what's there, but you can always adjust this using the slider if it doesn't look correct. Now we can control this in two ways. Now the first way and easiest way we can do this in auto mode is by locking our exposure settings on the camera. Now we can do this by tapping in the middle of the screen here and we'll see a lock come up and then all we need to do is tap it again and then we'll see the lock close. That's letting us know that we've just locked our exposure settings and nothing's going to change now. Now what this means is we've just locked our camera settings. So if we're filming today on a bright sunny day like this and we've locked our settings and then the sun was to disappear, we're going to keep the same exposure settings that we locked when the sun was out. So our picture is going to get a lot darker. Now, if we didn't do this and the sun disappeared, what our camera is going to do is it's going to try and compensate for the low light and it's going to change our settings during the same shot. Now, this is pretty much going to ruin your shot and we don't want this. So this is why locking your settings is important when you're filming. Now, another important thing to note, let's say you're shooting at sunrise or sunset. These lighting conditions are going to be changing quite fast with the sun coming up or going down. So if you're locking your exposure for a certain shot, in 20 minutes that exposure is probably not going to be quite right for that next shot. So if you are shooting these lighting conditions, remember to unlock and lock your exposure settings again so you're getting the correctly exposed shot. Now even in auto mode, our camera can get things wrong and sometimes it might be exposing for something that we don't want to be exposing for and this is very common in high contrast situations. Now, if we're in this scenario, there's something we can use and down the bottom of the screen here, we've got EV and this stands for exposure value. Now, when we're in the EV settings down the bottom here, we can press the plus and minus and that's essentially going to control our ISO and shutter speed in the auto mode and help us to lighten or darken the shot. Now, when we're in the auto mode, this can be really helpful so we're not underexposing or overexposing our shot with the camera doing the settings for us. Now, the second way and more advanced way that we can control our exposure is by swapping to the pro settings at the bottom of our app here. Now, with camera settings, there's lots we can cover, but in this video, we'll be keeping things very simple. Now, the three main areas we can control are our ISO, our shutter speed, and our white balance. Now, our ISO is essentially how bright our image is gonna be, and we always wanna keep this as low as possible. When we start to push that up and go higher, we're essentially gonna get more grain and more noise in our footage. Now, our shutter speed is how long the sensor is exposed to light, but to keep things simple, when we're in the pro mode, our shutter speed is what we're going to use to get the correctly exposed shot. So the higher we push our shutter speed, the darker you'll see the image will get. And what we want to do is get this balance so we've got a correctly exposed shot. Now when you're exposing your shot, you always want to be able to see the details in the highlights. And the highlights are the brightest part of our image. So if we're at the beach today, I would say the whitewash is probably going to be the brightest part of our image. 
And once we overexpose these too much and they go white, we lose all the detail and we won't be able to get that back. Now on the flip side, if we underexpose our shot, we're gonna lose our shadows and they're gonna go black. And once they're black, same as the highlights, we can't recover them. So that's why it's really important to always get a balanced shot when you're setting your exposure. Now we can check the balance of our shot by using something called a histogram. And we can find this just under the main settings in the top right of our app here. Now put simply, a histogram is just a graph that shows us the brightness of our image. It helps you understand if your image is too dark or too bright or just right. So on the left side of the histogram, we've got our shadows. And if everything's pushed too far to the left, our shot's probably gonna be underexposed. On the right, we've got our highlights. If everything's pushed that way, our shot's probably gonna be overexposed. And in the middle, we've got our midtones, and that's everything in between. Now, when we're looking at a histogram, we want it to be spread evenly between our two points. So not too heavy on the left, not too heavy on the right. This will mean we have a well-balanced shot. Now, in this menu, we also have our H-log setting. Now, log or H-log footage is essentially really flat footage with no saturation. Now, this gives us the most dynamic range, capturing more details in the shadows and in the highlights. This also allows us the most flexibility when we're adding color back in in post-production. To further this effect, we can also adjust our contrast, saturation, and sharpness in the app. If you're gonna spend some time color grading your footage after you've shot it, we recommend having a play with these and lowering these settings to give you some more flexibility as well. At the bottom here, we also have some grid settings and we can use these to help us frame our shots. Now, there's a few options here, so have a play around and see what works best for you. Now, a few other quick tips to mention when you're filming with your drone. Now, to minimize any unwanted movement from the drone, we do recommend putting it in film mode, which is the F mode, and this is gonna slow the movement down of the drone and help you capture some nice cinematic shots. Now, there's a whole range of different moves and shots you can do with your drone, and you might not wanna be in film mode for those, but we'll cover these in a future video. Now, another important thing to note is that when you're flying with direct sunlight like this, you wanna be shooting with the light or side onto it and never into it. Now, if you're shooting into the sun, you're gonna get really badly exposed shots and lots of shadows. You always wanna be shooting with the light so it's shining on your subject or side on so you're getting some nice contrast in your scene. Now, good times to get these shots are obviously sunrise and sunset when you've got some nice changing light that isn't too harsh or direct. So that's a wrap for today, guys. I hope this video has given you a better understanding of the settings in your Aero Pro and how to get the best shots. Now, if you have any questions, drop us a comment on the video and make sure you like and subscribe so you can see more future content from us. Cheers.